Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Andrew from Schnauzer Face Minis. I've been away for about two or three weeks, so thank you all for sticking around, and I hope this video is worth the wait. Today, I've got a really fun model. This is Lug from Privateer Press. Oh, did you notice the big pause? Okay, that joke may be a little polarizing, but it's been a while since I've had to come up with puns, so please just bear with me while I claw my way through this. Ah, it's because he's a bear. As always, you can keep your hands clean while airbrushing by wearing disposable gloves, but I just painted him with my bare hands. I decided against painting his armor in metallics because even a rusted metal could easily get lost against his fur. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, I tend to use a triadic color scheme when picking a color palette. A triadic scheme consists of three colors that are equally spaced along the color wheel. So the fur was an obvious place to start. I wanted a slightly warm but mostly neutral ecru color. Privateer Press puts out a lot of nice turquoise shades, so I decided on that for his armor. And to find an appropriate color for the cloth, I just moved straight across the color wheel to complete the triangle. So I go from the neutral fur, to the cool armor, and finally to the warm cloth. And those three create the cloak of invisibility, and from there it's really easy just to add the elder wand, and finally the resurrection stone. I used low tack tape to help create hard edges along the armor panels. To help the model pop off the table, I want the most contrast possible. And that means I need to have the brightest highlights touching the darkest shadows. This isn't entirely realistic, and it does push the model into a somewhat cartoonish aesthetic. But I think it's okay to forego a little bit of realism while painting a war bear that follows orders from a telepathic dwarf who compels him to fight trolls and dragons. It's been nearly two years since my last video, and I apologize for that, but there is some good news to report. First, I got a new teaching job at my alma mater, which has been a really rewarding experience. It's been more time consuming, but I'm super happy to be there. We've also added a new member to the family. This is Maggie. We adopted her from DFW Pug Rescue last September. She's about 10 years old and she was rescued from a puppy mill situation but she's in retirement now and she has made herself right at home. Unfortunately, there is also some sad news to report as well. And if you follow me on Facebook, you may have seen that last year we had to say goodbye to our two beautiful girls, Jessie and Slinky. And while both losses were extremely hard, we are very happy and comforted to know that they lived long, full lives. Slinky was blind and deaf, but she was the happiest and most easygoing dog in the world and nothing ever got her down. I wish I could be more like Slinky. We miss her very much, but I know we provided her with the best years of her life. And obviously saying goodbye to Jessie, the schnauzer face herself, was extremely difficult. She and I were best friends, and she was in the room with me for just about every brushstroke I ever painted. And I think losing Jessie has played a big part in my long absence from YouTube. Just sitting down to paint has been a constant reminder that she's gone, so it has been an adjustment to learn how to paint without her here. And I don't mean for this to be a downer. Jesse and Slinky are both prancing around in doggy heaven right now, and we will always remember the good times that we shared with them.
I use a variety of washes and inks to shade the fur. First I apply the ink a little bit heavily and then I go in with a clean wet brush and push the color around where I want it. The wet brush will also soak up any excess ink so it's okay to be sloppy here. This technique works great on this particular model because his fur is full of recesses for the ink to settle. However, this kind of shortcut is not going to work well on smooth surfaces where the ink would get a little splotchy. Just in the interest of time, I edited out the footage of base coating his leather straps and the bronze spikes, but for that I used Vallejo Game Color Heavy Khaki. That's one of their extra opaque paints that is densely pigmented and covers extremely well in one pass, so it's definitely a great time saver to have some of those on hand. I typically use Heavy Khaki when base coating areas that will eventually be painted in brass or copper or gold. Um, I find that the Vallejo Silvers have outstanding coverage and don't necessarily need a black undercoat, but almost any other kind of metallic really needs to go over a dark, solid base color. And by the way, I switched cameras right around this point, so hopefully the new footage looks even better. Like I said, I got a new teaching job, so the cameras and lenses I was borrowing from my old school had to stay behind, but I got a new setup that I think works pretty well, and I feel like there's less noise and sharper details, so hopefully future videos will have at least a little bit better video quality.
know this blood effect is a little gruesome, but I just wanted him to look barbaric. And just like when shading the fur, it's a good idea to be a little sloppy right here. This effect is going to work much better if there's a bit of blood on his fur. I mean, seriously, have you ever tried to get blood stains out of a polar bear? I suppose OxyClean would probably make pretty quick work of those stains, but I don't even know if they had OxyClean in War Machine. And like I said, I've been away from the game for a long time, so who knows. I used natural cork bark for the base. And for about 15 bucks, you can get enormous football sized pieces of cork that'll last you forever. So it's an extremely cost effective method for creating rocky textures on your bases. And you can find this stuff on Amazon or at most pet stores, as it's usually used in cages for lizards and tarantulas and stuff like that. To apply the pigments, I pull matte medium, which has been thinned with water, all over the base. And then I use the same wet brush to smear on weathering pigments and crushed pastels. And if your base ends up looking like the world's most disgusting cupcake, then you either did something right or something wrong. I don't, I don't know. Next, I use Woodland Scenics water effects to make icicles. I smeared some Vaseline on a piece of plastic to keep it from sticking, and then I squeezed out a few icicle shapes. It takes about 24 hours to dry and turn clear, but they end up looking very convincing. Finally, I mix snow flock with water effects and realistic water. The water effects mixture creates a fluffy, powdery snow, and the realistic water mixture creates a slushy, icy effect. So I concentrated the icy mix on exposed places in the mountain that would probably receive more sun, and the fluffier snow went everywhere else. And if it looks like you're frosting the world's most disgusting cupcake, then again, you're either on the right or wrong track, I don't know. But this got really messy for me, but I think it turned out okay in the end. And that's about all I've got for this video. This model is available on eBay, so check the link in the description if you're interested. And again, I want to say thank you so much to everybody for sticking with me through a really, really long absence. I am back for real this time, so please keep checking back for new videos. So be good to each other, and thanks for watching.